to take a look at uh, GCLB8, uh, this congruence criteria, but look at worksheet number two here. This is where we take the criteria and not just identify it, but physically prove it. Now we've already begun proof uh, in geometry so far. Most of what we've done is what a format that's called paragraph proof, where we are basically writing and explaining um, we state things we know and then we explain because of this or we know this because of that. It's a very written um, in prose instead of like a, a point form or a concise manner. So there is another way to express a proof. It's often called the two column proof because we create two columns and it's a, a much more, it's kind of like the point form of uh, a paragraph proof. So in some cases it can be a little easier format. Um, the way it usually sets up is they state what you've been given as your starting uh, materials. They tell you what they want you to prove and then often there's a diagram to help you to understand both the given and the thing that they want you to prove. The two tables here, the, the two columns, one side you'll make your statements, so you'll say this angle equals this angle, that side is the same as that side, this is a midpoint of this. You'll make statements, and then over here you back it up with your reasons. So you might say, uh, you know, angle A is congruent to angle B, and the reason might be because uh, the, the angle bisector um, theorem, or I don't know, I'm just making kind of stuff up here, but I'm just kind of that idea that I'm going to make a statement and then back it up with a reason why I know that. Now the reason side of things over here, it's easy to make statements, it's harder to make reasons. Over here you're going to use properties to help you out, uh, like properties of translations, or you're going to use properties of uh, certain angles or relationships, you're going to use uh, rules, you're going to use facts, you're going to use theorems that have been proven to be true already. You're going to use uh, proper, oh, I got properties. You're going to use um, characteristics. You're going to use uh, definitions. Um, you will use all the tools that you have to basically back up your claims. And the more specific you can be, the better. So I'll show you a couple examples, some very simple starter proofs that we'll make statements and then we'll back them up with some uh, some reasons. So let's look at a couple of these up close. Um, again, the format is a given the proof, what they want you to prove, and then a diagram that usually helps you to make some decisions. Um, again, the typical uh, pattern here is to begin by labeling or providing what they gave you. For many students, that seems to be redundant, and it's like, but you already know that. Well, it's important to put it in. It's also easy to put it in, so do it. We basically state what has been given to us. Always use the diagram to help you out. So BDT, this angle, is the same as GTD, this angle. The other given is BD, this length is the same as this length. Usually most of these proofs provide you with two of the three required items. One of the things I like to do is keep track of what I've already uh, listed. I've listed one angle and one side. And one of the typical tricks, if you want to call it that, is, is a common side. So in other words, DT is congruent to DT. That's a side. And even though I call it a common side, the proper mathematical term is the reflexive property. And basically the reflexive property says something is always congruent to itself. Now that we've got uh, two angles and a side, now the order we listed them here, it looks like angle, side, side, but here notice it goes side, angle, side. So I'm going to state that triangle BTD is congruent to triangle GDT, and I'm going to use side, angle, side. A very nice, simple proof uh, and obtain the goal. Let's try another one. Again, a similar kind of environment. They gave us two angles, uh, or no, they gave us one angle, B and D. 
I'm actually going to save a little room this time, see if I can sneak it in all in one line. And I sure can. So I'm going to say those were the two givens, AC and CE. So I look at my diagram again. I have two items. I, I need three to obtain congruence. And uh, I notice that there is a vertical angle that is in that diagram. So angle ACB is congruent to ECD, ECD. Vertical angles are congruent, so this equals this. And now when I look at the order things come in, I see it comes in an angle, and then an angle, and then a side, which is perfectly fine. Triangle BCA congruent to DCE angle angle side. Again, you can see it's a very logical way to organize our thoughts, statements and reasons, statements and reasons. It takes all the, the English out of the paragraph proof, basically. Let's just look at one more because this given's a little bit different. I always tell students that if in the given are words, you always have to translate them into mathematics. And the words always, the way you translate words to mathematics is always its definition. Maybe always is a big word, but uh, maybe it isn't always the case. But most of the time it is. C is the midpoint of AE. So this is a given. This is a given. So again, this is an angle that they provided us. This is a point they provided us. We don't want points. We want sides and angles. So I'm going to use the definition to tell us what this means. C is the middle of AE. That will mean that AC is congruent to EC uh, by the definition of a midpoint. So they told me it was a midpoint, and I'm using that to solve. There now is a side I needed. So I have a set of sides, and I have a set of angles. I only have two. I need three items. Uh, there is my angles there. So let's say angle ACB is congruent to ECD. Vertical angles are congruent. Oops, are congruent. That gave me another angle. Let's check the order. It comes in the order of angle, angle, and then a side. And so I'm ready to say triangle BCA is congruent to DCE by angle, angle, side. So these are the very basic types of proofs that we may experience. And these are just proving straight up congruence of two triangles. You can see how identifying early on, you know, what it is helps us out. That's why we spent time in that world of identifying the congruence relationship.